my name is Ebba Brockingham and I did my PhD thesis on the role of blood vessels in adipose tissue expansion. So adipose tissue expansion is of course it can be physiological during just growth and, and uh, up to a certain stage way before any onset of metabolic diseases or obesity. It's completely physiological and it's quite impressive that it's so dynamic that it's really one of the tissues that can expand and regress throughout life and it has an enormous capacity to do so compared to many other tissues. Of course skin has to follow, right? So skin together with adipose tissue is quite remarkable. So that obesity models and, and so on. And that's why my interest then into like how can you look at different adipose tissue depots because they're not the same. So depending on where the fat is sitting, uh, if it's a mantle around the intestines or if it's subcutaneous, uh, then you have different degrees of blood vessels and, and different um, regulation of these blood vessels. And these different depots, they also expand in different ways. So for instance, adipose tissue around the intestines, it mostly um, expands by getting larger and larger cells. So it's just this um, hypertrophy. Whereas in the subcutaneous, you can have hyperplasia and uh, hypertrophy. So you get more cells and they get bigger. So it's very like dependent on where it is. So the, the thing about lipedema that I didn't understand is like, why would it be localized only to like the, the, the regions around the limbs or the, the, the thighs and the arms? There's, as far as I know, there's absolutely no knowledge what would separate thigh region from subcutaneous adipose tissue somewhere else. I mean, if you look at the research on like why does women always get like bigger thighs and why does men always get bigger bellies? Like nobody really, really knows. <laughs> they say it's hormonally controlled and that's it. <laughs> so it's not really a good explanation. It's kind of like evolutionary good for you if you could build up huge thighs. It's great. <laughs> you can breastfeed for ages. <laughs> and that's, I guess, interesting on what is it that makes your normal adipose tissue change into something that's pathological or that is not functional or expanding too much or disproportionate. So you start out with some lifestyle choice. You say, okay, I'm going to do lots of exercise and I'm going to eat nothing at all. And then eventually, so you, you start with that with the conscious choice and you, and you want to do that. And then actually doing that changes you. It changes you in a way that you cannot control it anymore. And I think that's what's happening in obesity too. So you, you may be starting by just saying, oh, I'm going to you know, have some more snacks or I don't feel like doing lots of exercise. And then eventually over the years, this actually accumulates into something that you no longer can control. And, and that you know, may be what's tipping people over. So it's like very easy to get a little bit overweight in our society. And maybe when you're a little bit overweight, well, then suddenly you are actually no longer able to control yourself the way you were when you were skinnier. And, and so it's a, probably a combination of lifestyle choices and what those lifestyle choices do actually to your own body in the way of, for instance, microbiota. So the bacteria that live in your intestine that we just now are starting to understand how much they actually reg regulate our metabolism, but also our behavior. And this is what's maybe um, very new and, and very shocking to some that maybe you don't control your own behaviors. Maybe it's your bacteria in your intestine that are in part responsible for controlling your behavior, including eating, including sleeping, including physical activity and so on. And that uh, we, we like to believe that we are in control and we are maybe just robots and acting out on the instincts of our bacteria.